Episode 219, Playing a Small Game. Zach and Kate did not celebrate Christmas, but they worked late at the company that day, so they ate some food on the way out. While they were eating, Donovan called. Boss, where are you? I have something to talk to you about. It was late at night. He wondered what Donovan was up to. Zach did not think too much about it. He just told him the address. After hanging up the phone, Zach and Kate continued to eat dinner at the restaurant. However, when the two of them were eating and chatting happily, a young man in his 20s walked over and even carried a stool. He was very honest, just like an old friend, and directly sat between Zach and Kate. <laughs> Sir, don't mind me. My name is Gus. I just ate with my brothers over there. After drinking a few glasses of wine, he did not count in his heart. So I begged my brothers that I could hold your lady's hand and show off to them. But don't worry, bro. I'm just borrowing your lady's hand to hold her hand. I won't do anything overboard. The main reason is to satisfy my desire to hold the wall. Look at your lady. She's beautiful. If I can hold your lady's hand, I'll definitely be even more beautiful. Actually, it's not a big deal. It's just holding hands. When your lady meets a new friend, doesn't she need to hold hands? That's not a problem. One look, and you can tell that this bro is a bright person, so... You won't mind, right? Zack was surprised. This was the first time he had encountered someone who would openly poach someone. It was quite interesting to poach someone. He said to the young man named Gus, Brother, I am a narrow-minded person. What should I do if I mind? I see. Gus thought for a while. He then turned to look at Kate. Young lady, do you mind? Kate did not even look at Gus. She only closed the chopsticks and ate. It was enough to prove that she did not mind, and she did not even want to talk to him. Gus clearly understood this point, so he reached into his pocket and took out a card and placed it on the table. It was a card issued by a silver couplet, one of the four major stores. Gus tapped it lightly with his finger a few times. Bro, your lady, I have no intention of showing off my wealth. I just want to say that there is one million dollars in this card. If your lady can let me hold hands and go to our table to show my face, then I will. As Gus was talking, Zack asked excitedly, Give me all the million dollars. Gus was stunned. After a few seconds, he came back to his senses and said, Bro, stop messing around. What is so expensive? I am just holding a hand. Zack was very disappointed. He muttered, I thought you were going to give me all of it. How much are you going to give me? Gus thought about it again and again, then raised five fingers. Zack thought about it and said, 500,000. That's fine too. Gus's eyes widened. You really don't mind money. That is too much. Holding hands for 500,000? What do you think? Zack frowned. 50,000. Gus waved his hand again, and then gave the final answer. 500. Zack was speechless. He turned to Kate and said, Did you hear that? Holding hands with you is worth $500. Kate replied, Oh. She then opened her handbag and took out a piece of change and placed it in front of Zack. Come, I want you to kiss me. Then... While Gus was stunned, Zack and Kate kissed across the table, causing Gus, who was sitting next to them, to be dumbfounded. After Zack and Kate kissed, Gus asked, Then I'll pay $50. Can I kiss you? Kate sneered, and then asked Zack, Hubby, are you full? Let's go. Zack replied, Yes, I'm full. It was Donovan who said he wanted to come over. Wait. Only then did Kate remember that Donovan had called before, so she put down her handbag and sat back down. Gus was ignored. He wanted to find a sense of presence, so he said, Stop messing around. Let's get down to business. Bro, just let your lady hold hands with me and help me. I blew off the wall. It's not appropriate to go back by myself. 
Zack replied. Then, you can take this stool back. Anyway, you can't come empty-handed. Zack's words made Gus feel a little embarrassed. Bro, if you say that, it won't be very true. I have always been polite to you. Don't force me to change my face. Zack looked at Gus with a smile. Yo, you can change your face. Amazing. I don't know how sci-fi TV series change their faces. How about you change it into another one for me to see? Gus was a little annoyed, but he didn't think that Zack was a person who was afraid of trouble, so he didn't dare to make a move. So he looked at Kate again. Beauty, now I formally request you to become my girlfriend on this brilliant Christmas night. I promise that I will let you live a, a life of a, a, a hundred times more blissful than now. It's true that I am a rich person, but I also have my own goals and aspirations. <sighs> I, I also have the heart to work hard to live. I hope you can give me a chance so that I don't miss the greatest happiness in my life. Gus said it very seriously, but Kate did not listen very seriously. As a response, she was even less serious and just sneered. Gus thought that Kate would definitely think that he was lying. So he took out his phone and opened the bank on his phone. Look, my card really has one million dollars. I am not lying. And to be precise, it is one million and eighty thousand dollars. Just as he was speaking seriously, the door of the restaurant was pushed open and Donovan walked in. When he came to the table and saw Gus, he did not know where this guy came from. But he realized they did not dare to look down on him, even though he was sitting next to Zach. Then he asked, Boss, who is this? Zach smiled and introduced. He has a million dollars and wants to poach Kate. Donovan was so angry that he laughed. Nah, I thought he was a fool. How dare he sit next to you? Then he waved at the glass door. A subordinate came in with a suitcase. In the next second, the suitcase looked heavy. His men were 1.8 meters tall. It was difficult for them to carry it in. The next moment, Donovan reached out and pushed Gus away from the stool. He placed the suitcase on the stool. While delivering his suitcase, Donovan said to Gus, Kid, you are very rich, right? Gus sneered. At least more than you. Donovan looked at him with a smile, as if he was looking at a fool. Okay, I like the way you stick your head out and you don't know how to die. When the box was open, there was a stack of bills that emitted the fragrance of ink. Turning the box towards Gus, Donovan said, It's not much, just three or four million. Gus was a little dumbfounded. He did not believe it and even opened the box to take a look. He was afraid that there would be a white paper on the bottom floor. But he stretched out his hand and flipped through it. Oh my God, it was really all money. Was this guy crazy? Why did he come out with so much cash in the middle of the night? However, Gus had obviously underestimated the madness of these people, especially Zack. Zack lit a cigarette and said to Gus, Don't you have money? All right, then I'll play rock, paper, scissors with you. The simplest little game. If you win, all the money in this box will belong to you. If you lose, the million will belong to me. How about it, little friend? Do you want to play? Episode 220, Little Friend. Gus was stunned. He had seen people go to casinos and play with money, but he had never seen anyone play like this. He would use the simplest pair of scissors to determine the winner and loser. If he won, he would take away three to four million dollars. If he lost, he would lose one million dollars. This kind of competition was very violent, but it was also very exciting. His companions beside him were all attracted. When they saw the money in the box, their eyes instantly turned red. They really could not put back their jealousy. Some of their bad friends started to encourage Gus. Play with him! 
One hundred to three to four hundred? There's a bargain to be made. The others also tried to persuade Gus to take out one million to bet with Zach. Gus also wanted to bet. He also wanted the three to four million in the box. But what if he lost? It was not easy for him to get this one million from home. He planned to buy a car to play with tomorrow. It would be good if he really won. It would be a waste if he didn't pick up the three or four million dollars to go home. But what if he lost? When he went home, he said that he had lost a million when gambling with someone. It would be strange if his father did not cut him into pieces with an electric saw. His companions were still talking and encouraging him. Gus began to become anxious. If I lose, you guys take responsibility for me. Everyone immediately shut their mouths when they heard this question. They were embarrassed and didn't say anything else. Their thoughts were very simple. If they won, they would spend it together. If they lost, they would go home on their own. Anyway, they had no money. At this time, Zach looked at Gus again and asked with a smile, Then, are you still playing? Your lady is waiting to see your courage. Kate also looked at Gus with ridicule at this time. She wanted to see how crazy this little kid who dared to jump around outside with two pieces of money was. But reality proved that when faced with Zach, who was richer and better at playing, he really could not be arrogant. Even if he was humiliated by Kate's teasing gaze, he did not dare to bet that one million dollars just for the sake of gambling. So he squeaked and did not know what to say to round up the situation. Zach smiled and shook his head. Then he signaled Donovan to put the box away and called the waiter over to bring a few bottles of wine. After distributing one bottle to each person, Zach patted Gus's face and said, Little friend, drink your wine well. Don't just grow up without thinking. A brain is a good thing. Don't just use it to store feces. More or less, grow a brain. Holding Kate's slender waist, Zach directly walked out. He did not even feel interested in packing up this kind of child. It was simply meaningless to oppress him. Someone like us. It was just desserts after the meal. It was purely to get rid of boredom. After leaving the hotel, Zach asked Donovan, Did you bring a few million dollars out at night to give me a gift? Donovan scratched his bald head and said with a smile, How could the boss like this little money? I heard Donnie came over. So he brought the money and came over to play with him. He had a few drinks with him before and was going to have a gathering with him tonight. Boss, let's go together. Zach was not interested in what Donovan meant by having fun. He would not bring his own woman to such an occasion. Besides, he could not take a bite of a woman in that kind of occasion. Kate, who was beside him, was full of energy. She was comfortable wherever she went. Zach snapped his fingers. Donnie, who was in the business car in the distance, came over. After punching Donovan, Donnie asked Zach, What's the matter, boss? Do you have any instructions? Zach smiled and said, No instructions, just take those two with you. Tonight, let's go play with Donovan. This, Donnie was quite happy. But how could he not leave a single person behind? After all, they were bodyguards. However, Zach expressed that it did not matter. Go ahead. It's not like you aren't familiar with my background. Donnie thought for a moment and agreed. Zach's ability wasn't low. There was also Madison, who he was afraid of at home. Obviously, there would not be any problems. So after happily thanking Zach, Donnie called the man and GTR, and then went to have a happy night with Donovan. Kate looked at the two cars that were leaving and asked Zach, They all went. Why didn't you go? Zach replied, I'm not a stingy person. They like to play and ask for money, but I only like to play with money. Kate pouted and gave Zach a punch. You hate it. Zach liked Kate's cockish look. He scratched her nose, and then the two of them walked to the side of the car. However, just as they walked to the side of the car, they heard hurried footsteps behind them. Zach turned around and saw Gus rushing over. I want to bet with you. Gus shouted anxiously 
As soon as he arrived in front of Zack, he could see that Donovan had left with the money. Therefore, Zack had no money at all. Taking advantage of such a good opportunity, he had to quickly regain his face. Zack was amused. You saw that the money box was taken away by someone, so you angrily ran over to bet with me, right? Gus laughed. Meh, I don't have money. I just want to use someone else's money. You don't have the face to do that? This was truly a path of death. One after another. Truly brave. Zack took out the car keys and took a few steps forward, hitting the front of the Mercedes-Benz G63. I don't have the money. One car. I'll bet on your one million dollars. Come on. Gus was stunned once again. He thought that Zack had no money, but he did not think that Zack had no money. Just now, he was only thinking about looking at Zack and Kate. He did not notice that the two of them were coming for this car. Zack opened the door and called Gus over. Come, take a look. It's new. It's only been half a year on the road. It's more than enough to pay for one million dollars. Aren't you going to play with your dog head again? All right, let's start playing now. Let me tell you first. I'll play scissors. Let's decide who wins and who loses. Come on. Zack stretched out his hand and drew out a pair of scissors. He wanted to use the scissors as a punching bag, but Gus did not dare to reach out his hand. Zack waited for a while. Then he saw that he really did not have the courage. He directly slapped him on the forehead. You only have this bit of courage, and you still dare to come out and find trouble. You are looking for trouble. I will bet $3 million on you with $1 million. You do not dare. I have already told you what I will bet on, but you still do not dare. Are you a fucking loser? Why are you so disgusting? After a series of slaps, Gus didn't have the slightest bit of temper. He didn't dare to have any temper. He really knew that he shouldn't look for face now. The more he looked for face, the more he would lose. Fortunately, his companions didn't follow him out. Otherwise, he would have lost face by now. After being scolded, after the Mercedes-Benz G63 left, Gus let out a long sigh. Luckily, he left. If his comrades were to come out and see him, it would be too embarrassing for him. Just as he was secretly rejoicing, Gus turned around and saw that his comrades were all standing behind him. At this moment, his gaze was filled with disdain. He originally thought that they had come to find him to slap his face. Who would have thought that they would actually send themselves to his doorstep to beg for a slap in the face? Gus! You really are a nutcase. Episode 221, An Unexpected Meeting. Zack and Kate didn't take Gus's episode seriously. Such a small matter wasn't even worthy to be talked about by the two of them. The conversation between the two of them was not ordinary. It was too grand. The two of them drove while arguing about which position was more comfortable. But in the end, after arguing for a while, neither of them agreed with the other. In the end, they decided to go back and try to see how it would be more comfortable. Just as they were talking excitedly, Zack suddenly saw a mother and a son walking on the roadside. They looked very down and out of sorts. The car was very fast, and in the blink of an eye, it had passed. However, Zack immediately stopped the car and took advantage of the fact that there was no car behind him. To reverse, Zack was very surprised. He clearly did not do anything. What was Karen afraid of? With doubt in his heart, Zack gently caressed Karen. Karen, I am Zack. You don't know me anymore? Karen was even more afraid. As if it was because she recognized Zack that she was afraid. Kate asked in surprise, What's wrong? Zack replied, I think I saw someone familiar. He really seemed to have seen someone familiar. It was only when he turned the car around and returned to the mother and son's side that he confirmed this point. It didn't seem like it. It was someone he knew. Karen. Karen. 
and his cousin, Mansur. After stopping the car, Zach got out of the car and came in front of the mother and son. At this time, Karen no longer had the elegant appearance she had once before. Mansur also looked dirty. Although their clothes were very expensive, no matter how one looked at it, it looked like they were counterfeit goods that were bought from the street stalls. Karen was very scary when she saw Zach. She quickly held Mansur in her arms. No! No! Zach thought about it and guessed the reason. This child is a Marquez, is he not? Karen's eyes revealed fear. She waved her hand in panic. No, 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 no! He is! He is a Marquez! The more she panicked, the more Zach suspected Mansur's real surname. So she sneered and said, Kyle has issued an order to kill outside the family. Do you think Kyle will be willing to give it up if he really wants to? Karen was afraid. Her legs became weak. She directly hugged Mansur's body and knelt on the ground. Zach, I beg you. I beg you to spare the child. The one who is in the wrong is me, not him. He doesn't know anything. Karen's behavior completely confirmed Zach's guess. This made Zach somewhat annoyed. Although he didn't get along with Kyle, Kyle's name was Kyle, and he was also a member of the Marquez family. Karen had raised a child for an outsider for so many years. She really had the courage to cover up the entire Marquez family in the valley. No wonder the old fox did not care about this child and did not ask Mason and his mother to do it. This was already the most benevolent of them all. At this moment, Mansur, who was only 14 years old, suddenly kicked Zach's calf. You dare to bully my mother? I'll beat you to death! He was very fierce, like a little tiger. However, in the next moment, he was slapped in the head by Zach. If you continue to be arrogant, you will really die on the street. Do you think you are still in the Marquez family? You are always a fool. A 14-year-old child doesn't understand anything. You are ordered around by Michael at home, and you are chased away like a dog outside. How honorable is that? After a round of scolding, Mansur didn't dare to make a sound. Although he still had a look of dissatisfaction on his face, he was indeed more afraid of Zack, beating him up. Ignoring Mansur, Zack looked at Karen. Tell me, how did you guys know I was here? Zack was in this city, and Karen was in this city. He did not believe it was a coincidence, but in fact, it was really a coincidence. In the subsequent explanation, Karen told him the reason. When Karen was young, she had a friend from the same village. His name was Jasper. The two of them grew up in the same village and were childhood sweethearts. That relationship was quite sincere. It had never changed since they were young. They even agreed to get married after graduating from university. However, Kyle's appearance perfectly ruined this relationship. He took advantage of Karen's mother's serious illness and urgently needed money to poke a stick in it and pry Karen away. However, Karen felt sorry for Jasper, so she secretly handed over the first time. It was also that time that Mansur, who should have been called Jasper's son, appeared in the world. They had been in love for a long time, and now they had a child. Karen kept in touch with Jasper after the marriage. A few months ago, something happened that made Karen especially embarrassed. She was annoyed that Kyle was at home and didn't give a shit. Thus, she took the money and ran away in humiliation. She took Mansur with her and wanted to find Jasper. Then the real family of the three could live happily ever after. However, Jasper had found him, but Mansur and Jasper were not on good terms. Jasper did not care about Mansur's insensible and arrogant attitude, but Mansur could not see Jasper being poor. This father and son pair did not like each other and could not get along with each other. After living for a period of time, the conflict became more and more intense. Karen even quarreled with Jasper a few times for Mansur. The happiness that only existed in this fantasy gradually broke. Until one day, Jasper took all of Karen's money and jewelry and completely disappeared. It could be considered an explanation. Before he disappeared, he left a letter indicating that Karen owed him this. Her betrayal back then was the reason for this revenge today.
Furthermore, Jasper also said that he had always been related to Kyle. Only now did Karen understand that she had been deceiving Kyle for so many years. But in fact, she had also been deceiving herself. She even did not hesitate to carry a son of a bitch on her back and walk around the family foolishly. To be able to tolerate this kind of thing, Karen felt especially afraid in her heart. She knew that Kyle definitely would not let her off, so she hurriedly ran away. But she did not know where she would escape to either. So she brought the child into a vegetable seller's car and ran all the way here. Even now, she did not know what the name of this city was. Looking at Karen's pale and skinny face, then looking at Mansur's muddy body like a beggar, Zack knew that what they said was true. Other things could be faked, but this kind of essence and spirit could not be faked. Thinking about Kyle's forbearance and character, Zack knew that the two of them were almost finished. You guys are the ones who escaped from the Marquez family. So Kyle doesn't have to worry about anything. He just needs to cause an accident for the two of you. He won't stop pretending to be a prodigal in the family. So you think I'm here to kill you, right? After Zack asked the question, Karen nodded her head vigorously. Her face was filled with tears. At this moment, she was really afraid. She was afraid that Zack would get rid of both of them for the sake of the Marquez family's reputation. Zack, I know. In the past, the two of us were in the wrong. We have said a lot of bad things about you, but we have never done anything bad to you, and we have never harmed your interests. So, I beg you.